Hello again. We're going to start by opening Blender. This time, I'm going to teach you how to do very cool physics. They're cloth physics. You can take objects and make them behave like they're chunks of leather or pieces of denim or a, a tablecloth landing on the table, for instance. I've done a few animations there like that. It's they're they're fun to use and they look really cool. And if you have the patience for it, it it's going to be very fun to use. Okay, well, you see, we have this starting cube here. We're going to leave this here because this is going to be our object we have the cloth collide with. But press space, add, mesh, plane. Now this plane on its own will not collide very well as a cloth because it only has four vertices, which means it won't be able to accurately bend like a real cloth will. So to change that, we go into we press tab and go into edit mode. Now in edit mode, this is a lot different than object mode. You can't select other objects. You can only select the vertices that you see on the object you currently had selected. Let's press A to deselect all, and A to select all again. Now, uh, the key we're going to want to press is W. This is going to be the specials menu. It's this big menu that you can do all sorts of cool stuff with. Now, what we're going to want to do, though, is subdivide multifractal. This will subdivide your model, which means it'll put extra vertices in there and extra faces, so it'll have more bending points. And we're going to do, um, normally I'll do 24 or 12 cuts, but for this example, I'm going to do 10. Or 20. I'll do 20 because it looks better. You press OK, and another menu, another little menu pops up. It's called Random Fractal. This is how random the vertices are placed. If you're going to doing, if you're doing a cloth, you're going to be pressing one. You're going to want to do it as one. Press OK, and you'll notice when you zoom in, your cloth is pretty well subdivided, and it has a little bit of bumpiness to it, which looks like a real cloth. So you're going to want to press tab to go back into object mode. But you notice that your cloth looks kind of weird. It's really rough and not so good looking. So what you can do is you keep that selected, go back into edit mode. You press W, and then there's this thing, bevel, smooth, set smooth. You click on it, and when you go back, you notice it looks more like a cloth now. It's a lot better. What set smooth does is tell Blender to render it as smooth. It will basically, it's like a subdivide without subdividing. It's very nice. It's good for slower computers and it makes your a whole bake go a whole lot faster. Now you'll notice that this cloth is tiny. It's going to just land on top of this cube and nothing interesting is going to happen. So we're going to need to uh, place our cursor somewhere near the center of the uh, plane, which is now our cloth, and press S. And you move your mouse a little bit and you get a bigger tablecloth now. Now this cloth you'll notice is shiny. That's not right. So you go back down here and you press this button. And you'll add a new material and we're just going to real click quick name it cloth. And then you're just going to want to ignore all this except shaders. And then there's a spectral SVEC. I'm going to turn that all the way down to 0. Now it's not shiny. So now that we've done that, we go back into object mode, this object tab here, and now here's all the options for physics and collision. We're going to want to press cloth. Now our plane will act like a cloth object. It's, uh, we got to turn on the, we're going to go over to collision and turn on self collision so it won't fold in on itself, and, uh, you can set this collision quality which will make your collisions look better and they won't phase through objects. You can set it all the way up to 20, but if, for this example, I'm going to do 5. And there's also self-collision quality. Just leave that as one for now. I'll leave all these the same because cotton is a very good preset for a tablecloth, which is what we're going to be doing. And now, if you were to bake it right now, your cloth would just plummet forever. Which is true because this is not set to a collision. So you just go over here, this stays in the same menu, and you press collision, collision. Now our cloth will have a collision with this big object here. So you go over to this object again, press collision, and press the wonderful bake button. And your piece of cloth falls onto the cube and wraps around it like a real piece of cloth would and looks absolutely amazing. You can do much more extravagant and beautiful things with cloths. I've done quite a few renders here with cloths and they've taken a long time to bake, which is the downside with cloths because they are complicated. But aside from that, they're very cool. 
So as you can see, it's actually taking quite a while to bake this. So you just wait and wait and wait and wait. If you don't want to wait this long, you go down to see right here, start and end. This will uh, bake only to the end frame if you change the end frame. I keep that as 250 because it gives you a good long animation. Well, it appears our bake is done. Now you can see your piece of cloth here. Uh, so you and you notice it's not moving. So you move your uh, mouse down so you can actually see, and you press Alt A, and then the animation plays. And you can see that your cloth interestingly and coolly hits the table and bounces out. Now that is basically all there is to know about cloths. You can do a lot more cool stuff with them, but I'm not going to go into too much detail now. That is all. Goodbye.